Hi, I'm Pat, welcome back. Last week we finished Amish with a twist, so as you can see the frame is now empty and we're ready to work on something new. This time we're gonna be working on a quilt for a nonprofit organization called the Quilts of Valor Foundation. If you're not familiar with Quilts of Valor, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you more about them as we go. First, let's get started by taking a look at the quilt. This is for Quilts of Valor. So this was pieced by someone else, not by me, um, but we're gonna be quilting it. So we have the top here uh, with some information on the pin. So it looks like the top size is 62 by 78 and um, large eagle squares. And let's see, this was pieced by Sue. So one person pieced this one. Sometimes it's a group. Uh, but in this case, it's an individual. And they've provided us with some backing material. So let's open up this top and take a closer look. Looks like we have a set of blocks. Looks like four across by five blocks down, um, each with these uh, eagles in it. And then each block has a border in this mustardy color. Um, and then some sashing and then an outer border that matches the sashing. And then this is the backing that was selected for it. And so this backing is uh, definitely intended to um, mirror the background, you know, the color of the eagle feathers, so the background of that uh, center pattern there. So binding has not been selected yet for this quilt, um, but it will be once it's done. And I. Frankly, I think this color could probably work for binding uh, just as well as the backing. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing with this quilt is an edge-to-edge -edge design. So what we're gonna look for are, you know, a, a design that's something patriotic, um, not too busy because we've got a lot going on within each block. So we don't wanna overwhelm it. We'll probably go with a thread color that blends in um, at least with the uh, with the background of, of the eagles. We don't want to take away, probably actually a light color because I don't want to take away from the faces of the eagles. Um, I think that's probably the way we're going to go. Um, but it does depend somewhat on the pattern. So we're going to look for an edge to edge uh, repeating pattern um, that has somewhat of a patriotic theme, you know, flags or stars and stripes, something of that nature. Um, so let's have a look on the computer and uh, see what we've got, and then we can make a choice about what pattern we want to use. I don't expect to do any custom quilting in this quilt. I'm really gonna stick with the edge to edge uh, throughout, throughout the whole quilt. Let's take a look at the backing and see if it's pieced already. Hopefully it is, or if it's uh, extra wide. Okay. All right, looks like this is a single piece backing. That's um, the, the wide type of fabric, so the 108 inches. Um, great, okay, so we won't have to do any piecing on the back, that'll be ready to go. Just a little bit of pressing to smooth out any wrinkles. Before I load anything onto the frame, I always measure everything carefully, the top and the back. Because the backing fabric is usually cut approximately, I measure the length at both ends in both directions so I know for sure what the smallest dimension is that I have to work with. I'm also using a chalk pencil to mark the backing fabric with the direction that I plan to load it onto the frame. I like to give the top and the backing a pressing before I load them just to make sure I don't have to work around any wrinkles. Pressing the top also helps make sure that all the seams are sitting flat. <laughs> I 
I like to use all cotton batting, and I prefer to buy it on a bulk roll that's 120 inches wide. That way I can just cut down to size whatever piece I need. For long arm quilting, you need the backing fabric to be larger than the top, and then I usually cut the batting to be similar to the backing. All right, now we're ready to start loading everything onto the frame, and we're gonna begin with the backing fabric. On a long arm frame, each bar has what's called a leader attached to it, and that's made of heavy canvas fabric. What we do when we're loading our quilting fabric onto the frame is to pin it to the leader. I'm starting by pinning the top edge of the backing fabric to the leader on the take up bar. Making sure that the edge of the fabric is aligned well with the edge of the leader helps me make sure that the fabric is going onto the frame straight. If you look carefully, you'll see that I chose the edge of the fabric with the selvage for this because it's more likely to be straight than an edge that's been cut. The next step is to roll the backing fabric completely onto the take-up bar while keeping everything nice and smooth. Next, I'm gonna drape the bottom edge of the backing fabric over the backing bar and pin it to the leader. All this pinning can be a little time consuming, but you can't have too many pins because the last thing we want is for something to be shifting around while we're trying to quilt. With everything secured and straight, I'm now going to roll the backing fabric from the take-up bar onto the backing bar. This technique comes from a Facebook group that I mentioned in an earlier episode. I'll give another link below if you want to check them out. Next, I'm gonna put the batting on top of the backing fabric. And the batting just lays in place. It doesn't get pinned to any of the rollers. I am gonna use some basting stitches to hold it down once we get everything in place. Next, I'm gonna put the quilt top in place, leaving just a little bit of room along the top. With the help of the computer, it's easy to move the sew head horizontally without moving it vertically. So I'm using that to help me make sure that the quilt top is sitting straight. Now let's talk about designing the quilting pattern. In my library of designs, I do have a stars and stripes pattern that I thought might work. So to test it out, I did an arrangement where I took the pattern and repeated it uh, horizontally and vertically to simulate what the quilt might look like. In the end, I decided that this was just going to be too busy, especially with the busyness of the eagle print fabric that it's going on top of. 
So I took a look online and I purchased two patterns, this star pattern that you see here and a second one that I thought might work, which you see here. I decided not to use this one because you can see some of the stars have horizontal alignment and what that will do on a quilt where the piecing is not extremely precise is highlight the inaccuracy in the fabric piecing. Next I'm going to create the layout using my selected design. Without any modifications, if I create repeating rows of this design, those rows are going to be about 7 inches tall. And that's going to be a little small and too dense and busy for what I'm looking for. So I increase the size to 9 inches. Once I make the first row, I can tell pretty quickly that I'm going to want to go larger. Now I'm going to take the design and expand it to 12 inches tall, and then repeat that across the quilt. See how that looks. Already I can tell that's looking better, and I think this is going to work. You can see I've positioned the top row to have quite a bit of stitching off the top of the quilt and off of both ends. With an edge-to-edge -edge design, we want to have it look continuous all the way to the edge, and we're just going to trim whatever we don't need. Next I'm going to expand the pattern to include multiple rows, and part of that is choosing how close I want the rows to be. What I've done here is position the distance between the rows so that it looks like one continuous pattern without any breaks. Similar to the top row, at the bottom I've left quite a bit of excess again that we're going to trim off when we get there. Now when I say we're going to trim off of the excess, I don't mean that we're going to stitch it and then cut it off of the quilt. I mean we're actually going to trim the design on the computer so we don't waste our time stitching things that are not necessary. The Bernina software has a nice tool built in for this. All you have to do is move the sew head to the location that you want to trim. You can choose a horizontal line or a vertical line, and it will exclude any of the stitching that falls on the other side of that line. You can even pick two points and create a trimming angle if that works better for your design. So you can see on the screen that we're now going to use this trimming tool and the sew head to trim the entire quilt along a horizontal line, and then we mark where we want that to be. This trims off the excess that we don't need along the top. And then we're going to repeat that same process for the left side and the right side. For these, of course, we're using a vertical line instead of a horizontal line. The stitching that's going to be trimmed turns black to give you a preview. And you'll notice for the left side, it defaults to trimming what's on the right side of your vertical line, so we use the invert function to tell the computer we want to trim what's on the left side instead. I'm auditioning a couple thread colors, and in the end, I'm choosing one that blends in best with the eagle's faces, so I've chosen a natural white color.
So now that we have the quilting underway, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Quilts of Valor. The Quilts of Valor Foundation was started over 20 years ago with a mission to create quilts to award to military members, both veterans and active duty. The awarding of these quilts is a way to say thank you for their service. As of May of 2023, the foundation has awarded 350,000 quilts. Each of these quilts was handmade by volunteers, just like this one. The foundation has more than 500 groups all across the country working on quilts just like this. So take a look at their website if you want to get involved with the group near you.
Thank you for joining me for this episode. I really enjoy working on Quilts of Valor because it makes me think about how special this quilt is going to feel to someone soon. Next, this quilt is going to go to another volunteer to receive its binding, and then on to the award process. If you enjoy quilting, I encourage you to please check out the Quilts of Valor Foundation website to learn more and get connected with one of their groups.